two something. So my six gradients should end just before, and because it's a large circle, it looks like a lot before. There's my six gradients. So keeping that in mind, if somebody just hands you a picture and says, okay, here's an angle. It's missing its arrow, but the, it starts here and it goes to here. Approximately how many radians is that angle? About three. On web work, you will have a problem like this. And I will tell you now, the answer is an integer answer of radians. So it's one, two, three, four, five, or six. So if it's close enough, say, okay, that looks like it should be three. If it's somewhere <coughs> over here, then you're going to say, oh, that's a one. Now, well, I won't go there yet. We'll get there in a minute. Now let's go here and talk about co-terminal angles. What was the terminal side of an angle? What did I say that was? Well, it doesn't necessarily not be on the x-axis, but it's not the one that sits on the x-axis. It's where you, your angle stops. So it could end up back at the x-axis or never have left it if your angle has a degree measure of zero. So the actual definition of coterminal angles has to do with what their terminal sides are. They're related terminal sides. Angles are coterminal if in standard position, in other words, they're positioned with the vertex on the zero, zero, and the initial side on the x, positive x-axis, and they have the same terminal side. So, let me show you how this might look. I really need to get myself a nice circle or something to draw them with. So here's my axis. So we'll make this negative one, one, negative one, one, so that part doesn't matter because you can make your angles bigger. I'm going to have an angle that is right starts here and goes to, say, here. And I indicated that I went in the positive direction to get there. That's what this little arrow means. Now, I can have an angle that starts here and goes around once and partway around a second time and ends there. Those two angles have different measures because the first one didn't have a full one time around the circle and the second one did. So this has a much, the one with the black indicated arrow has a larger measure than the one with the red. But they end up in the same place with their terminal side. And this is going to be important when it comes to doing our trig functions because we will then only have to worry about going around the circle one time instead of what if my angle went around multiple times, because we'll I'll be able to deal with them as single angles. Now, it's also possible that I could have gotten to that angle this way by going in the negative direction. That is another coterminal angle with whatever the first red angle was. And it's also coterminal with the angle that was indicated by the black arrow. But you need to indicate with your arrows what your angles are because we need to know how many times they went around. Now, why do we care about this? Well, if we have an angle such as 77 pi over 3, what's more important to us is to be able to figure out where this falls within the going around the unit circle one time. So that's what this asks for. It says find the angle between 0 and 2 pi, that's one time around the unit circle, that is coterminal with 77 pi over 3. So let me ask you, 77 pi over 3, did it go around the unit circle more than once? Yeah, it did. Way too many times. Did it go in the positive or the negative direction? It went in the positive direction. So I need to work it back in the negative direction to get it back into 0 to 2 pi. So if I'm working it backwards, what do you think I need to do to work my way back from that positive angle measure to something that's got the same position but didn't go around the circle as many times? What do you think I should do to work my way backwards? How do you normally work your way backwards? If you wanted to work your way Doing something mathematically from 100 to 50, what would you maybe do? Subtracting. So that's how we're going to work our way backwards from 77 pi over 3 to something between 0 and 2 pi. We're going to subtract. What do you think we want to subtract 
ones we haven't got around too many. So let's start with our 77 pi over 3. I'm going to subtract 2 pi. That will give me 77 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3. I just changed 2 pi into something with the same denominator as my 77 pi over 3. And then I will get, now I'm down to 71 pi over 3. Am I between 0 and 2 pi? No. This is going to get old, isn't it? So I do it again, 71 pi over 3 minus 2 pi, which would be 71 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3. I'm now down to 65 pi over 3. Do I get to stop yet? How do I know where I get to stop? Yeah, so what would be lower than 2 pi? Because I've got it over 3s, right? So uh, because it's over 3, <coughs> if I translate between 0, so between 0 pi over 3 and 2 pi, or 6 pi over 3, then it tells me something in between these two is what I need. This is going to take a long time. Any suggestions? Divide 77 by 3. Yeah, let's try dividing 77 by 3. What's 77 divided by 3? 25 and a third? Two thirds. Two thirds? Let's ignore the two thirds part. This indicates that I did something 25 times. Yes? What did I do 25 times? I went halfway around the circle 25 times. Why is it only halfway as opposed to all the way? This tells me there are 25 threes in here, yes? But if I do 3 pi over 3, how far around the circle is that? That's only halfway. So what should I do with this 25? Double it. Divide it by 2. Let's divide it by 2. Because this is halfway around the circle. I went 25 halfway times around the circle. So when I cut 25 in half, I get 12.5. Okay, that's not so good. So I went 12 and a half times all the way around the circle. Yes. So I'm only going to use the 12. I'm going to subtract off 12 full times around the circle. What is 12 full times around the circle? So let's see. I'm going to so I'm going to go back to my original 77 pi over 3 and subtract 